Hello, I'm Graham Fitch and I'm coming to you from Steinway Hall in London for Pianist Magazine. And in this particular episode, I'm going to be looking at aspects of style in various periods from the Baroque through to the classical to the Romantic. Um, and I'm going to begin with the Saraband from the A minor English suite of Bach which begins like this. No dynamic markings, and I don't see any articulation markings uh, at all in, in, as it happens. And this is the Urtext edition. This is what we expect from an Urtext edition. It doesn't tell me to roll that chord, but any chord really, it can be, can be rolled, arpeggiated. I want to feel three in a bar. A little bit of movement here, movement forwards. The top of the phrase. Now let's just unpack that a little bit. So I am using the pedal, but I'm not using the pedal in such a way that you would notice the pedal, I hope. And I always think of the pedal as, as being like salt in cooking, you know, food without salt is going to taste really bland and it's going to be unpalatable. Um, but you don't want your guests to come to the table and take, take their first mouthful and go, mmm, salt. In other words, it's supposed to be a background uh, enhancer. So what I'm doing here, if I do use my pedal, I, I'm terribly careful not to go all the way down. <laughs> I couldn't write in the pedaling that I'm doing. It's not that type of pedaling where, you know, you write and then you write a release and then a change. It's not for legato, because I can do it legato without my pedal. See, this is with no pedal. Oh, I didn't like that bump there. That's better. So no pedal. So why, why am I using pedal? Well, not for the joints, I'm using it for the resonance, because I think it enhances my sound. Uh, I'd have to make a movement on each of those quavers, and then I wouldn't, sh wouldn't pedal these. Sure. Change, 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 and not in this bar, because there's nothing worse than hearing an ornament uh, caught in the pedal just really messy and dirty. Um, I don't think I'd want any pedal here. Now I, what I'm doing there is I'm lightening my dynamic level because Bach thins out the texture. So it's, it's almost as though we've now got a solo violin on the top and a very light bass. And do you see what he does here? I mean I'm now in bar seven. He starts to thicken the texture up. And then thin again. These trills, the, the little squiggly is a trill, um, unless it's got a line through it, in which case it's a mordant. Now the trill uh, needs to start on the upper note in Bach's music. So the trill is marked on the E flat, so I started on the F, and it must come on the beat. four notes. Now you'll notice there there's a, a delicious false relation between the F sharp in the bass and the F natural here. Uh, I decided there that I was going to arpeggiate my chord from the lowest note to the top note. I don't have to do that. I could have done it faster or I could have just landed solid. All of these things are really up to the performer. And then what Bach's done is he's given us the agreement, which is the variations on, on that material for the repeat. So on the repeat we'd, we'd flip the page and do the, the Bach's own embellishments. But I added an, a mordant there, and in this chord I added a little slide which is, we're quite at liberty to do. In this period of music, performers would have made a lot of these decisions and they would have improvised these, these things as they went along. 
Um, and here's Bach's written out uh, what would possibly have been improvised or what probably would have been improvised. So, you know, the thing with Bach's music is it's got to be expressive. All music has to be expressive. And if we're playing the piano, let's play the piano. Let's, let's play pianistically. So pedal, be very careful of it, but don't avoid it completely. None of the great Bach pianists uh, completely avoid the pedal. Um, but, but all of them use it judiciously and have used it judiciously. Plenty of dynamic variety. Maybe we avoid the, the extremes of forte and, uh, fortissimo and pianissimo, although I like a pianissimo. I was going to look at the Scarlatti D major, but I think we're going to run out of time. So I'm going to move on to the Mozart K454. Sorry, let me do that again. K545, <laughs> C major sonata, the famous uh, little sonata in C that everybody knows. the first subject and um, there's a few things to say about that. What I'm doing in my left hand is what's known as finger pedaling. I'm overholding my pinky. I'm not lifting my pinky up like this, um, but I'm holding it down to create resonance. And this is a completely legitimate um, practice of the period that all keyboard players would, would, would know, the composer didn't need to write that out, but the, the, the players would know to do that. So that means I don't have to muddy the sound by using my pedal, I can just simply overhold in my left hand. Uh, definitely a diminuendo. We've got tension, dominant seventh, uh, resolution there. Now a little bit of warmth, a glow from chord four. all I need to do. How many notes was that? One, two, three, four, five. Five notes in the trill. Now don't get too, not too legato here. So what am I doing? What sort of touch is that? It's a kind of non-legato touch, but it's not a staccato touch. So it's, it's energized in the fingers. And again, avoid this. I sometimes hear people do make a big crescendo up to the A. If you play the skeleton, so you've got strong beat, weak beat. Notice I'm releasing my fourth beat, short, long, short, long, like a cellist would do. And when I come to uh, this spot, Notice I'm articulating that, it's not legato. That would be really heavy and soggy, so I'm just lightening my touch there by playing the quavers short, the eighth note short. Now a little touch of pedal here, because I want a bit of resonance there. So, if you want a bit more resonance there, you could hold the pinky a little longer. Or if you want it really uh, dry, uh, drier. Now here, we do need to respect that slur. Now the, the, the trill here, that's a possible realization for the trill. Let me do it slowly. Let me do that really slowly. Some people do it this way, which is just a, a, a short trill that starts on the main note. Whichever way you, you, you do that, it's fine. Personally, I prefer on the upper note. Now bring out, there's a lovely little um, line hiding in the, in the bass there. So just allow it to come out. Lighter. Strong or weak. Now 
Now, let, let's just, let me just show you what I'm doing there. Um, I am overholding my left hand to create harmony. Again, finger pedaling. So what I get is, is a feeling of harmony from my left hand. So otherwise it would be, the two hands would be kind of competing. That's too busy. So a little bit of overlap in the, in the left hand. Do respond to the, to the patterns in the right hand coming down. Now notice how Mozart gets up as a kind of zigzag. And then, so there's an effortful ascent and a tumbling descent. Um, put those on the beat, those are poggiatura. I like to use the same finger, two, three, two, three, two, three. And again, what am I doing there with that trill? I'm absolutely starting it on the upper note. That's essential there. Now you could measure that out. Two for the price of one. And that's a good way of doing it. If, if you've got a young, if you're a young player or if you're teaching a young player, that's acceptable to play the right hand as sixteenths or, or semiquavers. So there are no dynamics written by Mozart, but the dynamics are implied by the music. So of course we need to add dynamics, otherwise we'd be, um, it would be really boring if we didn't add our own dynamics. And it's very much in keeping with the, the, the period. So for example, when you come to the recapitulation, it's in the wrong key. F major. So I would be dolce there and piano, piano dolce works very nicely for that. I'm going to end with the Brahms A major opus 118 number two intermezzo. Again, it's loaded with articulation marks, uh, short slurs and then longer slurs. And sometimes Brahms uses the two together. This piece, everybody knows this piece. So what does the, sh the short slur imply at the beginning? Well, I'm imagining what it, what it would have sounded like had he not written that. We might have made a crescendo through it. But with the slur, it, it, the implication is that we play the second note softer. So we get strong, weak. So ti-ta. And that's really how I interpret those slurs. Now a long phrase, keep moving through it, breathe. A long phrase, pianissimo doesn't need any um, description really other than that the music we'd play it in a, in a more relaxed way rather than just uh, in terms of its decibels. We'd want to be more reflective here. And I'm taking great delight in what's going on underneath in my right hand. Now I just want to take you down a little bit to the um, to the next phrase that starts in. Let me just find a good place here. Uh, bar 16. Um, we, again, we've got phrase marks that go over the bar line. Now a long phrase. Don't dawdle. Short phrase. Short phrase. A new phrase there. However, when we get to this spot, a long phrase, this, this is actually very interesting how the music feels like it's now moving forwards, forwards, and then a 
just at that high point, Brahms stops the phrase mark. You'd have thought he would, written, he would have written that phrase mark all the way over to the A, but no, he stops it. Now here again, short phrases, strong, weak. No phrase markings here. Short phrases. Phrases that cross the bar. Now, this for me is very interesting. It's a kind of hemiola effect. What we find is, again, phrase two, two beat phrases that cross the bar line. Stronger, weak, strong. A lot of people miss that. There's another one here. Strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak. It gives the music a different flavor um, if we really do respect these little phrase marks. And then when we come to our B section, long phrase. Again, it's very important that we do observe these markings and figure out what they mean. A lot of it has to do with bowing, breathing, singing, but um, again, they do often get missed. But people just don't notice them. They're just looking at the notes, but they don't see what's above the notes. So I hope that's given you a few ideas um, to explore for the style and, and articulation. And I will look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thank you for watching.